Welcome to another lesson as part of your six day mini course. Today is actually a two part lesson. I'm going to show you how to start accepting credit cards for your online store. And I'm also going to teach you how to secure your site with SSL. And I'll explain what these things are in a little bit. But basically this tutorial that I'm about to give is actually part of a collection of tutorials on how to set up and create your own profitable online store without any technical experience whatsoever. I'm going to teach you how to host and create your own online store without needing to know anything about computers. You will be self-sufficient and you will own your own website. And you'll basically have this feature rich shopping cart with which to sell your goods for free. All right. And in case you missed all the other lessons, you can actually sign up and get all of them over at mywifequitterjob.com slash free. All right. So when it comes to running an online store, no matter what type of store that you run, you're going to need to be able to accept payment. And the most common type of payment is credit cards and PayPal. But unfortunately, if you try to do your own research, there's actually hundreds of options out there. So it can be actually very, very confusing. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to narrow down your choices and kind of summarize some of the most popular and most economical options that you can make so you can make an educated decision about your payment processor. All right, so the most popular options that are out there right now are PayPal, Authorize.net, and Stripe. So PayPal, you probably already heard of. You basically have to accept PayPal in your store in this day and age. And the reason for that is because PayPal can actually automatically import the customer's information during checkout so that the customer doesn't have to enter anything in a form this is extremely valuable in mobile land because when you're doing checkout on your smartphone, you really don't want to enter in a whole bunch of text. And the fact that PayPal can import all of that information directly into your phone, that makes it extremely valuable. And in fact, if you look at my online store, most of the people on mobile actually check out through PayPal. Now, the second way to accept credit cards is through authorize.net. Now, when you're starting to do a little bit higher volumes, this ends up being the least expensive option. It takes a couple of days to get it set up and approved, and it requires regular PCI scans. And I'll talk about what PCI compliance is in a little bit. And then the third option is called Stripe. And Stripe is actually the fastest way to get set up and approved, and sometimes it can happen like instantly. In terms of the rates, it's actually one of the most expensive ones, but there's no PCI scans that are required, and there's actually no monthly fee which is really good when you're starting out because you don't want to be paying a monthly fee when you don't have that many sales to begin with. Now, I know I mentioned PCI compliance and it turns out when you accept credit cards, there's a whole bunch of guidelines that you need to follow so that you can accept credit cards securely. Otherwise you could be penalized. And basically the PCI guys, it's a standards committee and they set forth these guidelines and basically the more stringent parts of PCI compliance apply if you store, process or transmit credit card data. Now, services like PayPal Pro, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and Authorize.net allow you to host your own forms, so you actually have to have your site comply with PCI compliance. But the language actually sounds kind of scary, but it's actually not as intimidating as it sounds. And your provider with that you sign up for will actually walk you through the exact requirements. Usually it involves getting SSL installed on your server, which makes everything secure, making sure your antivirus is up to date, and getting quarterly PCI server scans. And what a server scan is, is basically this third party that kind of scans your server for vulnerabilities and you have to pass. Now, if you're taking credit cards, but you're actually not storing them anywhere, being compliant actually isn't as intimidating as it sounds. So basically you have to make sure you don't store credit cards on your server or in your database. Make sure you are up to date on all your antivirus and firewall software. Make sure your server is PCI compliant by getting it scanned. Make sure you're using SSL encryption. And you also had to fill out this questionnaire in regards to your credit card and security practices. And after that, you're pretty much compliant. So I wouldn't worry about this too much. Uh, as I mentioned before, one of the payment processors that you pretty much have to have is PayPal. <laughs> the problem with PayPal is that PayPal, there's so many different flavors of PayPal that it actually gets pretty confusing. So I'm going to just briefly go over what the different options are and tell you which one to sign up for. So the first one is called PayPal Standard. And this option is actually obsolete and it's definitely not recommended as your only payment processor. Now, the way PayPal standard works is that when someone selects PayPal, the customer is actually taken off of your site to PayPal's site where they actually have to hunt and peck for the button to push so that they can actually pay by credit card online. Now, the advantage of PayPal is that you don't have to worry about PCI compliance or any scans. But PayPal standard actually does not import customer data either to make checkout faster, which makes PayPal standard like the worst option. 
Now, PayPal introduced the more up-to-date version of PayPal Standard, which is called PayPal Checkout. And in this solution, which is also free, the customer data is imported to your cart, and all the other features are just like PayPal Standard. A user is taken off the site where they enter in their payment information, and then they're taken back to your site. So it's not ideal from a process and flow standpoint, but PayPal Checkout will actually import a customer's data so they don't have to actually enter it in again. And the third flavor of PayPal is called PayPal Payments Pro. And that actually carries a $30 monthly fee. And what PayPal Payments Pro is, it's essentially a payment gateway. All the credit card processing is actually done on your site. So the customer is actually never taken off the site. It's actually a really smooth checkout experience. And it's actually the most ideal checkout experience for accepting credit cards. You can customize the look and feel of your checkout. It does require PCI scans and compliance. But the good thing is that the fees are negotiable once you have a little bit of volume. And accepting credit cards through PayPal Payments Pro tends to be pretty cheap once you have a decent amount of volume. The next method is called Stripe. Now Stripe is probably the simplest way to accept credit cards. You can get approved instantly. You don't have to worry about PCI compliance. There are no monthly fees, which is really nice. But the cost is 2.9% and 30 cents per transaction. Now, in terms of transaction costs, Stripe is probably going to be the most expensive of the bunch, and you really can't negotiate on rates until you hit like $80,000 worth of spend per month. But what's cool about Stripe is you can get going right away with no monthly fees. And the third option is called Authorize.net, and Authorize.net is probably the cheapest way to accept credit cards online once you've achieved a certain amount of volume. The application process takes a couple of days. You do have to sign up for PCI quarterly scans of your server. But the good thing about Authorize.net is that they offer flexible plans that really get a lot cheaper as you process more payment. So like Stripe, it starts out at 2.9%, but as your volume grows, you can actually pay to get an extremely low rate. So right now, for example, I'm getting a 2.2% rate, which is substantially cheaper than 2.9. And when you do as much volume as I do, you end up saving a whole lot of money on payment processing when you go with a third-party provider like Authorize.net. But I don't want to confuse you guys too much. If you guys are just getting started, go with Stripe and PayPal Checkout. Both of those options are completely free and there's no monthly fees at all. So go with those two. All right, so in a previous lesson, I taught you guys how to install OpenCart. And so I'm now going to show you how to install credit card processing in OpenCart. And if you recall, the domain that I registered for this demo is called MyOnlineStoreTest.com. And by default, no payment processor is installed. So what you have to do is you have to go into the admin page for the cart. And you want to log in. And you want to go under extensions. And then pull this down and click on payments. And this is the PayPal you want to install. This is PayPal checkout and it's free and it'll actually import customer information into the cart. And the easiest way to install this is just to click on these wizard buttons here. Connect with PayPal. So first you have to create a PayPal account, obviously. And once you have your PayPal account created, just enter in your email address. And it'll ask for your password. And then after that, it'll just magically connect your PayPal account over to your online store. Now to connect Stripe to your store, it's a little bit trickier because it involves a little bit of money. I don't know why OpenCart doesn't support Stripe out of the box yet, and perhaps in the future it will, but you actually have to go on the OpenCart website here. And you want to look under the marketplace and just search for Stripe. And you want to use the official Stripe plugin, Stripe Pro plugin for OpenCart versions 2 to 3. The latest version as of this tutorial is version 3. Point something, so this is the one that you want. And unfortunately, I don't have the plugin here to show you, but I can tell you how it works to sign up. So once you install the Stripe plugin, and the way you install a plugin is you go to the installer, and then you upload the plugin that you'll get from the OpenCart site, and you'll install the Stripe payment processor. And once it's installed, you go back to extensions, payments, and you look for the Stripe option. And everything's in alphabetical order, so it'll be around here. All right, and what the extension is going to ask you for are two keys, and I'm going to show you where to find that in your Stripe account. So this is what your Stripe account looks like as soon as you create it. And once again, creating a Stripe account is completely free. What you want to do is you want to go under Developers and API Keys. 
And what the plugin is going to ask you for are these two values, your publishable key and your secret key. And once you enter those two values into the plugin, you should be ready to go. And at that point, your store will be able to accept payments through Stripe and through PayPal checkout. Both services are free. And after that, you're good to go. Now, there is one last step that you need to do with your site, and that's to enable SSL. Now, if you recall in the previous tutorial, we were hosting on SiteGround, and you need to go to your control panel in order to access the SSL feature. Now, back in the day, you had to buy an SSL cert, but these days, everything is completely free. So what you wanna do is you wanna go into your domain, and then colon 2082. That's the secret address to get to your cPanel. Now, if you forgot what your username and password is, which is what I just did, you can always go into your SiteGround account and click on login and use your credentials there. Go under my accounts, manage account, and under this information here, so this is my cPanel username. Or you can just go into the SiteGround backend under my accounts, and then you can just click on go to cPanel. So I'm just gonna go to cPanel this way, and what you're looking for is under security, let's encrypt. And what you want to do is you want to click on let's encrypt SSL and click on install. And you got to wait maybe like five minutes or so for the SSL to install. All right, so while you're waiting for the SSL certificate to install, there's one extra step that you have to do in the OpenCart backend. So we're going to go back under OpenCart and you want to go under system settings, edit, server, and you want to scroll down and look for the SSL option. Use SSL and you want to make that yes. Then you want to save. Okay, and once you've done this and the SSL cert is installed, you should be able to access it secure. And sometimes by default, uh, the system installs OpenCart as HTTP and not HTTPS. And so what you need to do is you need to edit one file. All right, and so go back to the control panel and look under File Manager. Go to the web root. And wa I want you to edit the config.php file. So we're going to take this file and we're going to edit it. And we are going to change this to HTTPS and HTTPS. And we're going to click Save. And then now it should be able to be accessed securely. All right, so as you can see here, the padlock is now green, meaning that my online store is now secure. All right, and that's all there is to it. After you do these two steps, you should be able to accept payment and your store is fully functional at this point. Now, if you enjoyed this free lesson, there's a whole bunch more where that came from over at mywifequitterjob.com. All you gotta do is enter your email address right here, click get started now, and I'll send you the full suite of free tutorials via email. Thanks for listening.